Hi friends and welcome to Book a Day for Little Learners. Friends, today I'm continuing our series of, of books about dinosaurs. If you haven't seen our prior books about that, please go ahead and check out our dinosaur playlist. Today we're going to read, Boy, Were We Wrong About Dinosaurs. Friends, I hope you stick around till the very end of this story because at the end of this story, I will give you a preview about tomorrow's story. This story is by Kathleen Kudlinski and it's illustrated by S.D. Schindler. Boy, were we wrong about dinosaurs. Friends, if you haven't already, please go ahead and click the subscribe button and the like button. If you aren't already a subscriber, I do a new book every single day and I hope to see you tomorrow, whether you're a current subscriber or a new subscriber. Long, long ago, before people knew anything about dinosaurs, giant bones were found in China. Wise men who saw the bones tried to guess what sort of enormous animal they could have come from. And there are lots of animals that were really large a long time ago, friends. After they studied the fossil bones, the ancient Chinese decided that they came from dragons. They thought these dragons must have been magic dragons to be so large. And they believed that dragons could still be alive. Boy, were they wrong. No one knows exactly what dinosaurs look like. All that is left of them are fossil bones and a few other clues. Now we think that many of our own past guesses about dinosaurs were just as wrong as those of ancient China. Some of our mistakes were little ones. When the first fossil bones of Iguanodon were found, one was shaped like a rhino's horn. So scientists guessed that the strange bone fit like a spike on Iguanodon's nose. Boy, were we wrong about Iguanodon. When a full set of fossil bones was found later, there were two pointed bones and they were part of Iguanodon's hands, not his nose. Friends, in some of the other stories that I've read, um, you can go back and listen to them, but we found out that in the Iguanodon was most one of the dinosaurs that there were a lot of them. A lot of them lived at the same time. Other new clues show us that we may have been wrong about every kind of dinosaur. Some of our first drawings of dinosaurs showed them with their elbows and knees pointing out to the side like a lizard's. With legs like that, big dinosaurs could only waddle clumsily on all fours or float underwater. Now we know their legs were straight under them like a horse's. Dinosaurs were not clumsy. The sizes and shapes of their leg bones seem to show that some were as fast and graceful as a deer. Friends, have you ever seen a deer dart out of the forest or out of a treed area? They can be very fast. Paintings in old books show dinosaurs dragging their tails in the dirt because a few fossils of tail drags were found and scientists couldn't imagine how muscles could hold up the enormous tails. This is funny, this dinosaur is thinking, maybe wheels would help. <laughs> he could put wheels on it like a wagon and drag it behind him. Thousands of fossil footprints have now been found with no tail drag marks at all. Clues in some dinosaur fossils show that their tailbones had stiff tendons inside them to hold them out straight. See there how they're straight, they're not drooped down. With their heavy tails to provide balance, many dinosaurs, even giant Apatosaurus, could probably stand on their hind legs, reaching leaves in the tallest trees. Others, like Tyrannosaurus, always walked on tall legs. Friends, could you imagine if he had to walk on like that and that, like a horse, he, that would be almost impossible for him. Inside the bones, scientists have found surprises too. We used to think that dinosaurs were cold-blooded like snakes and lizards. Cold-blooded animals need to bask in the sun to warm their bodies. And if you think about that, friends, like kind of how a cat lays in the window where they want to get warm. Um, but lizards, if you have a lizard at home, like as a pet, you have to keep a sun lamp on them so that they stay warm. Their body doesn't adjust to the temperature outside. When scientists look through a microscope of slices of, liz of lizard bones, they don't see many blood vessels inside. They do see rings where new bone grew slowly year by year. Dinosaur bones look different. 
They have lots of blood vessels inside and new bone seems to grow around every one of them. So this is what a lizard bone looks like and that's what a dinosaur bone looks like. Dinosaurs may have been more like birds with bodies that were warm and full of energy night and day. They would have needed this extra energy to move their graceful legs. Are we right about dinosaurs yet? Now, some scientists think that they were neither cold-blooded nor warm-blooded, but something in between. There is no way to be sure. That is interesting, friends. Scientists used to think all dinosaurs were scaly because a few fossil skins showed bumps that look like scales. Now, more fossils have been found with marks that seem to be from feathers. What did dinosaurs have on their skin? Bumps, scales, or feathers? We can only guess, but we have some good ideas. What do you think, friends? Bumps, scales, or feathers? Maybe all three. That might help on cold nights. It's the latest fashion. <laughs> so these dinosaurs have feathers. This one really does look a little bit more bird-like, doesn't it? Because big animals lose heat more slowly, we think that the big dinosaurs, like the big elephants of today, wouldn't have needed fur or feathers to keep themselves warm. In the last few years, fossils of many kinds of little dinosaurs have been found. Some grew no bigger than a pigeon. These small animals needed some way to keep from losing their body heat. Some of the fossils show warm, fluffy feathers like a baby chick's. Others show long feathers like a rooster. So see, he has short feathers like a baby chick, like they said. And then this one, they have longer feathers like a rooster. Scientists used to think that large dinosaurs were gray, like today's gray elephants. But if that were true, bigger meat-eating dinosaurs would be able to see these gray dinosaurs against colorful leaves and grasses, and they would be eaten. Now scientists think that dinosaurs had colorful patterns that protected them from being found and eaten. Colors and patterns also probably helped dinosaurs show their sex and age to others. The way birds do. Recent x-rays of some dinosaur fossils show that they had bird-like skulls with room for large eyes and enough brain space for color vision. So friends, when they were talking about birds that show their sex and age to other, well this is other dinosaurs, but if you think about a peacock and a peahen, the peacock is the male and has very, very pretty feathers, and the peahen is a female and she doesn't have pretty feathers. So when you look at those female and male version of peahen and peacock, you can tell just by looking at them if they're male or female. We used to think that dinosaur mothers acted like lizard mothers. Boy, were we wrong. Lizards just lay their eggs on the ground, then leave. They never see their own babies. Now we have found fossil dinosaur eggs in fossil nests. Some of the nests hold newly hatched eggs, newly hatched babies. Other nests are packed tightly with older baby dinosaurs. These youngsters have scratches on their teeth from eating tough plants. Did their mothers bring food back to the nest? Or did the young go out to feed then come back home to sleep? We can only guess, but these are things that lizards never do. So again, similar to a bird, a dinosaur would have their babies in the nest and then would go out and get whatever they needed and bring it back to them. In one place, many nests of fossil dinosaur eggs have been found on a hill. It must have been a safe place because different kinds of dinosaur mothers made their nests there year after year. Fossil footprints have been found that show a whole herd of dinosaurs walking together. Footprints of baby dinosaurs are there too, walking safely in the middle of the herd. So we know some dinosaurs took good care of their babies, just like mamas to take good care of their children. Even our ideas about the end of the dinosaurs seems to have been wrong. Scientists used to think that the world slowly dried out or got hotter and that heat and diseases killed every dinosaur. In the last few years, we have found a fossil layer of dust that is probably from outer space. This new clue makes us think that a comet or asteroid might have hit the Earth and exploded, 
setting off fires and tidal waves. It could have made a huge dust cloud, but it would have poisoned the rain and blocked the sunshine for years. Most plants can't grow without sunlight, and acid rain makes plants and animals weak and sick. If the plants all died, the animals that ate those plants couldn't find food. And if those animals died, the meat eaters wouldn't have any food either. Scientists think all this might have happened before the clouds settled to a thick layer of dust on the earth. But we could still be wrong about the end of the dinosaurs. In one way, the scientists of today agree with the Chinese of long ago. They believe some dinosaurs are still alive. Toward the end of the millions and millions of years that dinosaurs lived on Earth, some of the smaller feathered kinds changed bit by bit. Over the years, their feathers became longer. They began to fly. Gradually, they became birds. While the rest of the dinosaurs died out, somehow some of these birds survived. If scientists are right, our birds are living dinosaurs. There are still dinosaur books in libraries and bookstores that show the old way of thinking. Scientists keep finding new clues and our thinking has to change. Perhaps today's ideas about dinosaurs will someday seem just as silly as the magic dragons of long ago China. When you grow up, you may be the scientist, scientist who makes us all say, boy, were we wrong about dinosaurs. And then friends, here's a dinosaur um, timeline. Friends, thank you so much for joining me for this wonderful story. Boy, were we wrong about dinosaurs. Although the pictures were not actual photographs, I think the author did a great job telling us about some ideas about dinosaurs and how those ideas have been proven to be wrong or changed. Friends, I hope you join us tomorrow. Our story tomorrow is Dinosaur Bob. And so if you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell. Then you'll be alerted when that gets posted. Until then, friends, have a great day.